Hello, in today's video, we're going to discuss the science of exercise. <coughs> Hello, uh, do I know you? Everyone knows me, eventually. So you're one of those guys that leaves angry comments on my YouTube channel? No, I am death. I am Yama, with a delicious knot in your name, Yam. I come for you when it's your time. Ah, Lord Yama, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, an absolute honor. Oh, would you like some coffee? It's good for you. Lots of polyphenols. Keeps your heart, liver healthy. Reduces the risk of cancer. No thanks. Not a big fan of things that uh, make me wait, if you get what I mean. Okay, suit yourself. What brings you here? There has been some discontent in the board of the company of which I am CEO. Harvest has been inefficient. It has been slowing down over the last hundred years. Oh. You guys used to die at a predictable and healthy rate. But the last century has been tough for my company. ROI is going down. Expense ratio is not good. Oh. So I thought I should come down and find out what's going on. I subscribe to your YouTube channel because you seem to be overly optimistic about science. So I thought I'll ask you some questions as part of my research. Okay, go ahead. My first question. Till a few decades back, our infectious disease product used to be an absolute rock star. Millions used to die every year. Oh, stuff like smallpox and plague. We found that a fungus whose fermentation skills made these molecules that are absolutely brutal to bacteria. So we've mostly eliminated large-scale deaths from bacterial diseases. TB still continues to be a problem, but there are some promising new methods. And smallpox, really, really nasty virus. So antibiotics didn't work, but it took us a while. But even a thousand years ago, we had the right idea. Taking pus from infected patients and using it to give healthy people immunity uh, to the disease was practiced in places like Varanasi. India eradicated smallpox in 1977. I mean, I still have the scar, but my son doesn't because we don't even need to vaccinate against smallpox anymore. And now we have mRNA vaccines. I mean, COVID would have been insanely worse if not for vaccines. And finally, waterborne diseases. Most major cities now treat their water and increasingly people use reverse osmosis and UV filters at home. So we've drastically reduced deaths from diseases like dysentery that used to kill millions in the past. Still some way to go in the poorer parts of India, but we will get there. So big picture, deaths from infectious diseases have gone down year on year for the last century. So, antibiotics, retroviral drugs, vaccines, water treatment. But what about starvation? I mean, we realized your agriculture was never going to keep up with your population given how hard it is for plants to get nitrogen. Oh, you can thank Fritz Haber and Carl Bosch. They figured out a way to turn nitrogen into ammonia. And since then, we're producing way more food than we can eat. We often don't do a great job of distributing it. But deaths by famines and starvation are at an all-time low. In fact, when it happens nowadays, we consider it to be an atrocity. And let's not forget Norman Borlaug, hybridized varieties of grains saved India in the 1960s at a time when the Prime Minister was asking Indians to skip one meal per week to prevent grain shortage. Hmm, so no starvation. What about wars? You guys used to fight and kill each other all the time. Well, global trade and economic growth tend to prevent wars. Uh, and when there is money to be made, people avoid large-scale fighting. There are exceptions, but the broad direction in the last hundred years has been towards fewer deaths from wars. Road accidents, plane crashes. Planes are now the safest mode of transport. Cars have become safer and safer every year. ADAS, collision detection, and eventually autonomous driving will reduce deaths from transport. And even if someone does meet with an accident, we now have ICUs, anesthesia, and organ transplants. Limb regeneration is still not there, but we're now able to transplant limbs from other accident victims. I used to think pollution will eventually get you guys. Yeah, but the West has largely cleaned its air and we are getting there. Sure, some cities are really bad, but as we switch to cleaner sources like wind, solar, and nuclear, this will not be an issue in the future. All those grains in your diet, no wonder you are the diabetes capital of the world. Well, yes, we've gone from staring at starvation to staring at abundance of calories in less than a century, but awareness is increasing. 
Life expectancy in India has gone from 40 years in 1947 to 75 in states like Kerala. Indians are now realizing that they need to eat more protein, reduce grains and eat more vegetables and fruits. And thanks to GMO and fungal fermentation, we now have synthetic insulin that lets diabetics live normal lives. Uh, they used to die young back in the day. And last but not the least, and actually I was going to talk about it when you walked in, awareness that exercise and building muscle is one of the best ways to reduce insulin resistance is increasing. And by the way, we recently found out that if we make a molecule mimic GLP-1, we can get people to eat less food and it's working wonders for weight loss. Yeah, and heart disease used to be our most promising product. Almost every death certificate needs cardiac arrest. Yes, from Christian Barnard's first heart transplant to plutonium-powered pacemakers to statins to stents to now potential nanobots, we've managed to truly extend the life of the heart. And of course, awareness that exercise extends the life of the heart. One of the things we introduced around the 2010s was a bunch of algorithms and handheld devices that massively increased communal polarization, made people lonely, destroyed democracies, increased mental health issues. Wonder how that is going. Yeah, you mean social media. Uh, that one's still a problem. But there are pockets of resistance. There is a movement to ban the use of smartphones in school, age limits for social media, and also increasingly tougher data protection laws. What about smoking? Drinking? Well, we made the cigarette companies pay. I mean, we tax them heavily. And drinking is actually going down. And more people are wearing sunscreen. So less DNA damage from UV. Well, so I guess I just wait for eventual organ damage from aging. Well, we have a bunch of new groundbreaking technologies. Stem cell regeneration is promising. We're already pretty decent at transplanting organs with immunosuppressive drugs. Yeah, but for how long? Genomic instability will eventually get you. Yes, it's true. Uh, but let me explain this term to my audience. Our DNA keeps accumulating mistakes every time it replicates. Because our correction mechanisms will eventually fail to correct enough mistakes over time. But we now have something that works like copy-paste for genes. CRISPR. So I'm hoping it'll allow us to fix these errors before they accumulate. Oh yeah? What about telomere attrition? Shortening of telomeres as you age will eventually result in cellular aging. So telomeres are protective caps at the end of our chromosomes and they prevent chromosomes from fusing with one another and mixing up genes. As we age, these caps get shorter and shorter and it eventually becomes short enough for the cell to go, oh my God, something's wrong and self-destruct. This process is associated with aging, cancers and heart disease. Funny thing, we're now realizing that, drum roll, exercise, particularly strength training to build muscle, helps maintain telomere lengths. And we're also exploring telomerase therapy and some promising activators like TA65. Okay, fine. You can keep fixing your genes, but eventually proteins will misfold oh. and malfunction. You will lose proteostasis. True. Most cellular functions are possible because proteins fold into a precise and specific 3D structure. So when they misfold, problems happen. Again, getting people to eat below their caloric requirements, fasting, seems to help. And have you heard of rapamycin? Trust me, it's amazing. Can you believe that a molecule made by a soil bacteria in Easter Island is able to modulate the mTOR pathway? and reduce the rate of protein synthesis. And that has potential long-term benefits like fewer cancers, neurodegenerative disorders, and heart disease. Mitochondrial dysfunction, it's the powerhouse of the cell. With time, all the oxygen you breathe will eventually damage enough of them. And then your cells will die, and then you will die too. Have you heard of mitochondrial targeted antioxidants? They are coming. And did I forget to mention, Exercising to build muscle improves mitochondrial function. Forget it. You think you can exercise your way to immortality? Don't forget the second law of thermodynamics. Life is tiny pockets of order in a universe of chaos. Entropy will eventually get you. 
well can't argue with that but you know the funny thing forget crispr stem cells rapamycin ozempic mrna nanobots and other ground breaking new biotechnologies honestly i don't think the goal is to extend lifespan which is the number of years you live but extend health span the number of years of your life that you are healthy the most effective health span extending technologies are free eating fewer calories and exercising to build muscle